Title of this message is going to be called Wolf Pet. And today I want to present to you three strategic tactics, which I believe are going to equip the body of Christ as a whole, not just hungry generation, but the body of Christ. Who knows that we are at war? And we have a real adversary whose mission is what? To steal, kill, and destroy your life, right? Who here is a member of the Lord's army? Right on. A lot of us. And as a member of the Lord's army, who knows that we all have a role to play? Go ahead and go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to start reading in verse 12, and I'm reading from the ESV. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Verse 14. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. Down to verse 25 that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Say, I am the body of Christ Christ. and individually a member of it. I mentioned that I was in the military before I came to Hungry Gen. I served 10 years in the Marine Corps. Uh, I was a scout sniper and a Marine Raider, uh, which is in Special Operations Command. Within Special Operations, there's a saying that gets bounced around a lot. And it goes like this. The strength of the wolf is the pack. The strength of the pack is the wolf. What that means is within every team, there's this relationship between the individual operator and the entire team. If me as an individual operator, I need to, I need to draw on the support of my team, they're going to have my back. And it's not just on the battlefield, but also personal situations, right? We all go through life. We all have our, our issues we walk through. But also, my team is going to rely on me. Okay, the structure of most special operations teams is you, they're a small group of dudes, right? And each guy is, has the same base level skills. They all go through the same training to get to the team. But when you get to the team, you go and you learn a specialty. Okay, there's different specialties. Uh, mine, I was a team sniper. Some guys are breachers. Some guys are medics. Some guys are dog handlers. You have all these different capabilities that bring together the team dynamic. And although one guy might specialize in one specific skill, it doesn't mean that he's any better of an operator than maybe some guy with a a less desirable role. So within the body of Christ, it's the same. A lot of us have different roles. Within every team, there are specific roles, but every role is important. We don't need everybody having the same role within the body of Christ. Every position should support each other as we work together towards the same mission. If me as a team sniper, I'm supporting my dudes as they're moving on an objective and they're, they're trusting me with their security and then they're moving and they're exposed and then I just be like, I'm just hypothetically speaking, just leave my gun there and be like, you know, I don't really feel like being a sniper today. I don't really feel, you know, I'm going to go eat chocolate with my allies because that's a lot of times what they would do instead of fight. So what I did right there is I would be dropping the security of my team when they're trusting me to to employ my role within the team. So it is within the body of Christ. We cannot forsake our role as part of the body. Your teammates need you and you need your teammates to cover them. I recently had somebody ask me, what's the most important role within one of these teams? And as I was thinking, I couldn't think of one. I was thinking, well, okay, every role is important, especially when you only have 12 guys to draw from. But some roles, let's be real, are more desirable than others, right? I had a desirable role. A lot of guys want some of the the cool guy jobs. Not everybody wants to be the radio guy, right? (laughs) Sitting there carrying a bunch of weight, a bunch of batteries, and a lot of times getting taken out of the fun to sit there and do techie stuff, right? Not my preferred, you know, thing. Thank God I didn't have to do that much. But just because it's less desirable doesn't mean it's any more important than my role. 
I can't tell you how many times it was the radio guy that was the reason we were able to advance on our enemy. That it was the radio guy that was able to call in close air support and get bombs on bad guys that ambushed us and saved lives. Or that was able to call in an aircraft to come pick up a buddy that had been blown up and was about to die. See, a lot of times that these less desirable roles, they, they are so vital. How many people know that when we do prayer line and we have the pre-prayer line ministers in the back on a Saturday unseen in that back room, giving up a whole day of their time, pouring into people. It takes a lot out of those people, right? And they're back there, they're unseen, and they're not looking for any recognition. And what do we call the people that a lot of times pray for them up front? Spiritual snipers, right? It's kind of a Christian slang word, but it gets thrown around a lot. See, a lot of people, they see what's happening up here, but they don't know what's happening behind closed doors. They don't know about the, the heavy lifting that's going on in the preparation. And then those people come up and they receive their freedom. One team, one fight. We are all enlisted in serving the kingdom. But do you know what your role is as a member of the Lord's army? And do you know how your individual role affects your teammates? Tactic number two, it takes two. I'm going to explain more of what that means in just a minute. But every aspect of your spiritual life, you cannot do it alone. Right here on the wall, we have this saying that says, you can't do life alone. Already, service is just starting. Several people have already referenced that. Life groups, all these different resources that we have to equip the body of Christ. You cannot do life alone. And I'm going to give you a quick illustration real quick. So within the military and law enforcement, there's something called close quarters battle, CQB. Okay, what this is, is it's the systematic way to clear a structure in an urban environment. In layman's terms, it's how you take a room with a bad guy inside of it. Okay, so this is going to be my pretend gun for safety reasons. All right. So we got a doorway here. Just imagine that there's walls running both sides. That means this is a center fed room. Okay, if there's no matter where you go within the military and law enforcement, there's a ton of ways to skin this cat, right? But there's a few rules that they remain the same no matter where I've been. I've done this for 15 years and there's some doctrinal hard issues that you must abide by. And I'll show you why. One of those is it takes two to clear a room. So if I'm by myself, and I try to clear this room. I know some of you can't see, but I try to look into that corner, that far corner, right? Well, what's in this room, by the way? There's walls here. Me standing on the back side of it. Okay, maybe. Maybe there's two. Maybe there's none. I don't know because I haven't entered this room and dominated that space. I haven't cleared it. So I'm standing from the outside of it. I have to take it. It's a mission. But I don't know what's inside. So I'm going to treat it as if there's bad guys inside. So I'll try to maybe look, see what's in that corner. Maybe try to deliberately clear around. Try to see as much of the room as I can before I go in, right? And then maybe try to look into that corner, okay? Not to mention any open doors that might be in there, any immediate danger areas, any hallways, any couches that someone could be hiding behind. All these different places that I by myself, there's no possible way I can pick up that security. So I've done the best I can by myself, right? So now I'm going to make entry. And my back is still to an uncleared space. No matter how fast I try to go in and I try to clear this room by myself as effective as I want to be, as tactical as I want to be, there is, there's no way that I can do it without having my back exposed. Now, if I have a buddy, this is Cole. He's in my life group. We do life together. All right. All right, go back. Okay, so now, now it takes two, right? I got my buddy. Okay, he tells me when we're going to go. I do the same thing. I'm just going to deliberately clear this doorway. And then we're going to make entry together. So... What he did, let's thank Cole. Thank you, brother. So what Cole did, 
what Cole did is, is as soon as I step through this doorway, I have to check this corner. The second I step through the threshold of that door, he puts a gun in this corner and watches my back. And then I go around and we together clear this room as a team. Just as you can't enter a room alone, you can't go into your next season alone. Who here knows about the lone wolf mentality? Who's heard that thrown around? I don't need anyone. I'm a self-made man. I can do it on my own. Okay, what that sounds to me personally is pride, arrogance, maybe some fear of rejection, some insecurity maybe, you know. Also, what, first of all, what a miserable way to live where you get to the end of your life, probably alone, probably addicted because you lived a life of isolation, angry, bitter. There's something special about a community that you can draw from, a community of, of believers, a team where they have resources you don't have right? Where they have accountability. There's how many times are we tired of going into a season and getting hurt, getting shot in the back, broken relationship, hurting relationship after hurting relationship, bad, stupid financial decision after bad financial decision, where as if maybe we involved some leaders into the situation. If I invited my mentor, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've called or gone to Pastor Casey's house and been like, brother, this is what I'm struggling with. When on my way home from work and I see something, you know, tragic and I, I just be like, hey man, I just want to talk this through with somebody. And guess what? He always makes himself available for me. This, these front rows, the, the, there's so many people that I call, that I draw upon. And these resources, these people that are there for me. There's a saying that goes, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. The distance you go will be determined by the community you surround yourself with. There's a, uh, there's a ministry called Pure Desire. Anybody heard of it? Awesome, awesome ministry. I've uh, been involved in it for maybe about five years now. And they have a saying that they bounce around a lot. And it says that the, op- the opposite of addiction isn't sobriety, it's community. And it, shows, it tells me how important community is. Isolation is the breeding ground to addiction. You know, there's, there's a difference between solitude and isolation, Right? It's important to understand the difference uh, between the two. When you go into a new season, you could have gone through, you could have gone through 99 rooms and been fine. You could have gotten lucked out 99 times, nothing, no one in there. Like we said, I don't know what's in that room till I've gone in it and cleared it. But it only takes one time for you to go through without protection for you to get shot in the back. A team needs to be healthy at the individual level or it'll be spread too thin and it'll eventually break. We all have blind spots that we can't control. What's hiding in the dark corners of your life that you cannot see? Pride will tell you that you can enter that room alone. Don't be the prideful lone wolf. Go with me to James chapter four, verses six through eight. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Me personally, that verse is kind of terrifying. Because when you're living in pride, it says you have resistance from God. It's pretty scary. But there is a grace on the humble. When you are humble enough and you can reach out, to your leaders, when you can reach out to your brothers and sisters, there's grace on your life. I'm from Alaska. I'm a hunter. I'm a fisherman. When I got out of the military and I chose to come to Tri-Cities and and stay here and live here, who knows I'm not here for the hunting and the fishing, okay? (laughs) Compared to Alaska, right? It's all right. But I really felt the Lord tell me, John, this is where I am establishing you. This is where I am now stationing you. 
I've been stationed many different places, served many different places, but now I am based here. And who knows that when you're on a military base, you're stationed somewhere, that's where you're being trained, that's where you're being equipped, and that's where you're being prepared to go out and to face your enemy. Some people might be like, okay, well, that's great, John, but I'm exhausted. I'm burnt out. I don't feel like facing my enemy, let alone training. It's like, okay, that's understandable. Very often, even Jesus would withdraw for times of refreshing. For me, I'm an introvert. This is way outside my comfort zone. When I need a time of refreshing, I like to go to the mountains by myself. That's what I do for fun. And, and so, you know, very often I'll come back and I'll be recharged. And that's a lot of times what Jesus said. He would, he would withdraw intentionally, intentionally withdraw. But what? He always returned back to his community, back to his team. And he was empowered in the spirit every time. And so that is what solitude is. Solitude doesn't mean you're a lone wolf. Solitude is that intentional withdrawal. Whereas if I'm in isolation and I separate myself from my team, pridefully, okay, I'm just going to do my own thing, right? The difference between solitude and isolation is that there's intentionality behind solitude. And isolation is like, it's this escape. It's, I'm, I want to get away from that. I'm not, and then when you are present, you're not. When you are there with your family, you're, you might be physically there with your wife or kids, but you're not even there. You're not present. You're not available. Isolation is the breeding ground for addiction. But solitude doesn't mean you're a lone wolf. Just draw from the community. A lot of people, they wanna, they're looking for fulfillment in their different roles within the body of Christ. An identity of a title. You know, they think that maybe if I'm this or that, whatever, I'll, I'll have more fulfillment, more, it'll complete my life. So I just want to encourage you, your place, it's not the worship leader, it's not the pastor, it's not the team lead, it's not on the prayer team. Your place is the secret place, which is often behind closed doors. Back here, before the door even opens. This place right here, this is where often many of the most intense battles are fought. Where you are unseen. When it is you and the Lord. And you feel you're crying out to God. And there's this time, like we were, that song we were singing in worship, um, fighting on, on your knees. Right? That is, you are at war. Do not belittle your place when you are unseen in the shadows. Your fulfillment is not in your titles. Feast on his goodness and you will not starve. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Your place, it is a secret place, yes, but your place is also being a brother and a sister. Are you somebody else's brother and sister in the church? Do you have somebody's back covered or are you going into places alone that you shouldn't? And does somebody have your back? Some places we are just, we're never meant to go alone. Involve the community. Tactic number three, give no place to division or offense. I'm going to share with you the scariest moment of my life. So I was on a deployment and it was probably the craziest night of my life. At this point, 19 people had already died. Uh, Two of them were carrying bodies up this mountain. Uh, They were our allies. And all we were trying to do is we were trying to get to the top of the mountain to where we could get on a helicopter and get out of there before the sun came up. And the terrain was brutal. Everyone's very on edge. And we crest this mountain and there was this small building that we had cleared on the way down at the very uh, beginning of the night. And there was no communication that I recall. Uh, Someone decided to go and clear that structure for us as we were coming up, um, which was great. Uh, But 
the our allies found a um, found a, a dead guy in there from our encounter previous in the night and decided to dump a, a whole mag into this guy that's n- not a threat anymore. Um, no communication, but all we know is as we crest this hill 30 yards away that there's fully automatic AK fire coming 30 yards from us. And so what happens is some of us, we don't see really what's going on. We don't really know. And some of our allies start shooting back and forth. What that's called is a a blue on blue or a green on blue situation. The scariest situation that I can imagine. My buddy off to my left, but we don't know it is at the time. My buddy off to the left, he screams, cease fire, cease fire in a very frantic voice. And that's what was scary for me because he immediately started running into that building. Maybe he heard something that some of us didn't. And it wasn't the fact that we were getting shot at that scared me. It was the fact that some of the team may have shot each other. And not the Americans, but our allies. But bullets are still coming both ways. It's the same way within the church, in the body of Christ. Some of us are hurting each other. Some assignments, they might be done differently than yours, but it doesn't mean necessarily that that way is wrong as long as it doesn't go against the word of God. God created you for a purpose. Don't try to do somebody else's assignment that you were never called to. God gave you gifts. If you neglect your gifts and you don't want to go and pick at somebody else that's gifted in their gift, you just drop security on your team. Your team needs you. I can think of Jesus when he spit on the mud, put it on the guy's face, and he healed the blind people. If I were there, I'd be like, okay, well, for me, when I pray for healing, that's not generally my preferred course of action, right? (laughs) I can just imagine Matthew from The Chosen just standing there like, okay, like spit on eyes. But who here would be like, Jesus, that's wrong, you know? Like, clear, the guy can see now, it worked, Right? Some different things, are, they're different within culture, right? Having some understanding sometimes, but also some wisdom, right? Not saying not to rebuke, but there's ways to go about things. Really, some things, they just aren't worth the division of the body. Uh, this one deployment I was on, we, uh, we, would, we would fly off of this air base, and we would do our raids, and then we would come back to the air base. And we, would, we, were on, we were nocturnal and we'd do everything at night, come back and we would eat breakfast burritos as a team for dinner. And uh, we come in, we're pretty tired from a long night and uh, guys changed out of all their mission gear and some guys are in their you know, normal issued like work pants, random boots, Crocs, um, random hoodies, long hair, don't care, beards, um, mustaches, lamb chops, whatever. Um, ball caps, and then our like cool looking Gucci dot rifles, right? And we walk into this chow hall and there's a ton of other people from all over the world that are supporting these different missions. And, but they're more kind of just stationed there doing maintenance on aircraft, different things like that. Some of them have nothing better to do than go look for problems. And there was one time where they're eating as a team and this nice sharp looking Marine you know, first sergeant comes over to our table and wants to strut his stuff and be like, who's the staff in COIC? Like, who's who's the officer, the non-commissioned officer in charge? No one bats an eye, everyone keeps eating. But my team commander, he just kind of chuckles and he says, we all are. And the guy just kind of is like, okay, and then he just walks away. Some things, they just don't really matter. And they're not worth the division of the body. Let's be real. We all have our own issues. That's why we're here. Because we're all in need of a savior. Extending some grace goes a long way. We're not the body of Hungry Jen. We're not the body of Bethel. We're not the body of First Baptist. We're the body of Christ. Go ahead, go with me to Ecclesiastes 4.12. And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, 
two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. A leader needs his team and he needs to allow other leaders to lead theirs. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If you're in a season of following in an unseen role, be the best follower you can be. Be, be faithful in the small things and you will be entrusted with much. I did not see myself standing here, right? I didn't know how to use a microphone. I actually put this on upside down and Phineas had to correct me before coming up here. <laughs> be faithful in the small things. This community, Hungry Gen, it's your base. This is where we are being stationed. This is where you're being equipped at the individual level to be sent out. It's been referenced many times already this morning. We have a lot of resources available. Life groups. If you're not in a life group, I'll say it again. Do not leave here without getting plugged into a life group. You can go into that uh, back overflow room and get signed up. Life group leaders, just raise your hands. I'm a life group leader too. If you're a dude in here, you want to join my life group, come talk to me. I'll take you. Their life group's awesome. That's community. That's where we do life together. We have life class. It's a, I think, six weeks where you go and you just learn all this awesome stuff, do this deep digging, and then you finish it off with a three-day retreat in the mountains. You thought Race to Deliver was insane. Try going to a retreat. It is awesome. No service, just you, the Lord, and community. We also have destiny training all kinds of stuff. There is, there is equipping here. You're planted in a good place. Are we being used as, effecti- as effectively as God is giving us the opportunity to? Many of us, we might be equipped, but is the person beside you? Are their backs exposed? Are you going into rooms by yourself that you were never meant to enter alone? Are you suffering alone and choosing to not reach out? Is it, is it pride? What, what is it? Many of us, we moved from all over the world to be stationed here. You could probably tell by some of the accents already throughout the service. <laughs> I know many of us are on fire, but are we burning together? Yes. 